One more time, everybody clap your hands. You that are watching my city, come on. Out of your seat, hug somebody, embrace them. If you're watching by our virtual sanctuary, be members. I want to take this time to tell you I love you all. I repent. Forgive me for not giving you all the attention you deserve. But e members, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. All of you that are watching tonight, welcome to the Shabbat Church, better known as the place of passion, affectionately known as the 1403. We have two services designed with you in mind. One is on Wednesday night. The other is on Sunday morning at 1030. Our motto here is we hear it on Wednesdays to experience it on Sunday. Welcome to our Bible study. Sit back and enjoy and learn more about who your God is. You may be seated, so please keep playing. You may be seated. We do have visitors tonight. Shabbat, we do have visitors tonight. And I want each of them to get a healthy round of applause. Our first guest is from Altamont Springs, Florida. Guest of Jackie Thomas, Ashaya. Lily, where are you? Ashaya Lily, please stand, dear. We want to love you. We want to love on you. Did I pronounce that name right? I did or I didn't? Thank you very much, because that's my pet peeve. I want people to uh, have their name pronounced correctly. We have an online viewer from the refuge Temple Church of God in Christ. I'm a part of that. Marion, Illinois. Janice Watson, where are you, Janice? Stand so we can love on you in Jesus' name. I am in good grace and good standings with our presiding bishop, Bishop J. Drew Shedd. I'm in pretty good grace, so you're in a good place. If I mess up, call him, and he'll rebuke me for you. PG County, I've got friends there all through PG County in Maryland. They are guests of the Ethelwald, Ethelwald Mays. And now he wrote his name, so I'm saying it. Deacon Ethelwald Mays, stand Deacon Ethelwald Mays. Y'all clap him. His guest is Brian Witten. Where's Brian? Brian, we're glad to have you. Hey, Brian, this is the first time he let us say his name. I need you to know that. So you should have came around about a year ago. Wonderful church there in Leesburg, which is pastored by Prophet Raheem Warren. Clap for our own prophet and pastor. Gregory West, where are you, Greg? Where's Gregory West? Can we clap for Gregory West? Jacksonville, Florida is where this particular gentleman is from. He is guest of a wonderful uh, member of our church who supports me, looks after me, feeds me, respects me. Chef Waldron Kelly, stand so we can pay homage. And y'all y'all clap for Chef Waldron. His guest is none other than Bobby Parks. Bobby, please stand. Can we love on Brother Bobby? Amen. We thank God for our executive pastor this evening, Overseer Sonia Mixon. 
along with our tier leadership that includes everyone tonight. Let us pray for the Hope family, our senior father and Dr. Barbara. They're going on a well-deserved vacation tomorrow. Can we cover them in prayer? I said, can we cover them in prayer? I want them to go safely, but I want them to get back safely and quickly. Safely, don't do nothing. But what goes on in Vegas stays in Vegas. Did you all enjoy our church meeting on Sunday? It was, it was something so far I've researched that no pastor has done yet. Not even your last one. If you said it, you lied. We didn't just have a meeting. We had a meeting of transparency, a meeting of honesty, a meeting where we all could learn how to respect one another. Amen. And we're having part two in September. In September, I will take you into clips of me preaching in the 80s, in the 90s, so that your psyche can see the visibility of what real ministry looked like back then. Remember, the relationship between a pastor and the congregation is a partnership. Y'all don't have to say it today, but you better be ready on Sunday. With mutual respect and support being essential for the health of the church. It's on the screen. At least five of you help me say it again. Let's read it. Remember that the relationship between a pastor and the congregation is a partnership. With mutual respect and support being essential for the health of the church. Can you clap for a healthy church? Church is getting a bad rap. But by the power of God, may we be one of the fine ministries that he could smile and become what I call an antibiotic for the misrepresentation of the body of Christ. I'm still on faith. I'm not done with it, and y'all should be talked to. I'm not done with it. My iPad is so loaded with sermons in the past two weeks or a month and a half on faith to where I'm going to need a new iPad in a minute. I want to talk about, we're still dealing with faith. We still have the subheading of order my steps. All of you that know most of the words to that song, help me utter them. Order my steps in your word, dear Lord. Lead me, guide me every day. Send your anointing. My son's here. Father, I pray. Order my steps in your word. Lead me and guide me every day. Order my steps in your word. Please. Look at your neighbor and tell him you have to stop allowing your feelings to lead you. And let your faith do its job. Faith and feelings are not friends. Talk to me in every section. Because some of y'all want to have church, but you don't need to have church no more. You need to have Bible. And in having Bible, you'll learn how to properly have church. I see some more guests in here. Their name wasn't on the list. If I don't know your face, I know your guests. You hiding out, but you're a good guest, though. I want us to begin reading... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't give you our new teaching, though. Look at somebody and tell them faith to handle it. I felt some help up here. 
Look at your neighbor and tell him you need faith to handle it. I miss Izzy. Welcome to Wednesday. I miss Izzy. I want to start off by reading Romans chapter 8, verses 28 through 31. Romans chapter 8, verses 28 through 31. I want to read it in the King James, and then I also want to read it in the Message Bible. Young adults, help me tonight. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Let's go a little further. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Verse 30, moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Look at your neighbor and tell him there's levels to this. You see that there's levels to this. I want to read that part again until some of you understand there's levels to this. Because some of y'all are still stuck at called. Verse 30. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he called first layer. Those he called, them he also justified second layer. Whom he justified, he also glorified. Look at somebody again. If they're friendly, tell them there's layers to this. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Look at your neighbor. Put in their heart. Stop worrying about them. Who's them? Those who are against you. If you are chosen, you definitely have someone contradictory to your calling and purpose in God. If you're not chosen, you got a whole lot of friends. Fake, real, and otherwise. But if you're chosen, that circle gets smaller small until it almost looks like a period you're losing friends because you're finding yourself will you say that to yourself I'm losing friends because I'm finding myself now let's read it in a friendlier version of the Bible the message Bible is not actually the Bible, but it's a rendition to make what is complex a little more user friendly. When I read it, if something is far off, I will correct it. But I preach from the King James. I study in the NIV. I research from the Amplified. Have y'all caught that? I do word etymology from the Greek, Hebrew, and the Aramaic. It'll take some of you years to do this. But the friendly version, which is the Message Bible, it reads, God knew what he was doing from the very beginning. This is how minds read. I know y'all. He decided from the outset to shape the lives of those who love him along the same lines of the life of his son. Look at somebody and tell him, I'm going through certain situations that my Savior went through also. Let me give an example. They said he's our king, and a week later, they said kill him. So the closer you get to your purpose, the more you lose company. That's what I'm telling you. So whoever speaks well of you, look for a little contradiction 
later on down the line when you're no longer the version of you that they like. Look at somebody and tell them I'm about to become a 2.0 version of myself. And I need y'all talking because I need all of this type of communication tonight. The sun stands first in the line of humanity he restored. We see the original and intended shape of our lives there in him. God made that decision of what his children should be like. He followed it up by calling people by name. And he called them by name. He also set them on a solid basis with himself. And then after getting them established, y'all missed all that, he stayed with them to the end, gloriously, completing what he begun. So what do you think? With God on our side like this, how can we lose? I know y'all like he, them, he predestinated, he called, called, he, he did this, that, and the other, because there's layers to this, but you missed the layers in the message Bible. He called you by your name, so if people call you out your name, you're not supposed to respond. Look somebody and tell them, you know who you are, so don't respond to who you aren't. Let me say it again. I know who I am. So I don't have to respond if you call me outside of who I am. Once you respond to a name you're not called, you've given a, pro a portion of yourself away. Yep, people got quiet. If they call you a cheat and you ain't cheating, you shouldn't be trying to prove you ain't cheating. When people defend what they're called, they're probably what they're called. Let people have their opinion of you. Why y'all not clapping over here? Y'all mad at that? Bishop, I'm sorry. I just can't let people do that. You have to. There's a scripture in the Bible. We're not using it. It said the good fight of faith. That means there are certain battles you're not supposed to fight. You got to give it over to God who called you what you are and remember what he said. If I be for you, all right, y'all not who? Some of you just give too many people too much of yourself. Your faith has to be very skinny. Malnutrition. Dehydrated. Your faith needs a psychologist. You're perplexed, disturbed, disoriented, disillusioned. Y'all not going to talk to me? And for you to be chosen, you never have a high total with a low tolerance. If you have a high title in the kingdom, you're supposed to have a level of tolerance to understand Satan's coming at you. Because if he gets you, he gets everyone under you, right? So this is not actually about you. It's about a bigger group following you. You're being attacked as a leader, not because you're anointed, but let's go on. Satan is more anointed than most of us. I won't prove that today. I just saw you. Now, hold on. That's a little deep. Talk about it. I said I wasn't. But Satan's been anointed longer than all of us. The Holy Writ says, for those who look confused, who didn't study the am Amplified, does not, you don't read the NIV, you barely read the King James, you just got introduced to the message, you don't know Greek or Hebrew, but you want to judge what I just said. Absolutely. Scriptures in the Bible, when Satan was in heaven, the Bible, even when he was evicted from his territory and then cast on earth, and Jesus says in Luke 10, verse 18, 19, and 20, I beheld Satan fall as lightning from heaven. He lands on the terra firma called earth. He said these words, thou were the anointed cherub. 
You don't go to heaven because you're anointed. You go to heaven because you're holy. So a lot of you that are highly anointed are still going to a low place. That's why you got to stop protecting your image. And just be who God called you to be. When God called my name, he never said perfect Todd Hall. When he called Abraham, he didn't say perfect Abraham. He said Abraham. Look to mine and tell him, are any of your names in here perfect? Just go on and ask him. Because maybe there is one. Maybe there is. And if you all please stand, Timothy's should be standing because his is more perfect. At least his name in the Bible. Rahim, your name ain't in the Bible. That's an Islamic name. Dr. Mixon, your name ain't in there, but we're going to let you believe it is. John, your name in the Bible, but you know you far from perfect, don't you? There's a John the Baptist and a John that needs to be baptized. My name ain't in the Bible, none of them. Frank, your name in the Bible? Oh. Michael, your name in the Bible? It's an angel that kicked Satan out. Okay. Let us respond to what God called us. And the Bible says for two people who are actually here to learn why we were yet sinners. He loved us while we were not who we are supposed to be. So if he loved us like we were, stop worrying on people who don't love you like you are. You are still a better version of what you were, but people didn't know you when you were. And now because they meet you, they judge you from the time they meet you into the mistakes you made, but you forgot the mistake I was. Making a mistake and being a mistake are two different things. Look at somebody and tell them it's not a mistake that I met you tonight. I like the King James, what shall we say then? I'm almost done to these things. If God be for us. Talk to me on social media. Who can be against us? We also... And I saw another friend of mine over here. We also misunderstand and misappropriate a certain text that I want to bring clarity to. When people see chosen people, preachers, apostles, prophets, whatever your title is, functioning in your office, and then they hear about a rumor, one that may be false or true, whether you did it or not, they then tag a scripture to some of you to make you an illegal, usable Christian. Y'all didn't hear the words I use. I've heard people in here use it, and I'm going to correct you now because it's obvious that you never studied the Bible. You just found the scripture. You said, I don't care if they can use and call fire not from heaven. They're going to hell because uh, 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 the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. Now, y'all use that. You see how folk kept this straight face it, because they're the ones who said it? You said it, and it's in the Bible. The gifts and the callings of God, find that back there, are without repentance. Just look up without repentance and you'll find it real quick. The gifts and the callings of God. So what you're saying is God will use people that are not his. And will pimp people for his glory 
while knowing they're going to hell. That's what you're saying. You're saying, y'all ain't talking, that God does not have enough righteous people to use. And now you're upset because he's using fake and not using you. Why isn't the one that's judging being you? Look at this. Look, look, look at this. Look at this. The gifts for the gifts and calling, not an S. Y'all better catch me because I'm going to be leaving you. Of God are without repentance. Stay with me, Vickers, because this could translate to you too. Is there a message Bible part of this? Is If it is, can you like put it? Let me read it and see if one of you will stand. I want to lay all this out on the table as clearly as I can, friends. Because this is complicated. It would be easy to misinterpret what's going on and arrogantly assume that you are royalty and they are just rabble. Oh, yeah, they don't want to look at this. Out of the ears of their ears for good. And not uh -uh, it at all. But that's not it at all. This hardness of the part of the inside of Israel towards God is temporary. The hardness is temporary. The hardness. Y'all are not in Bible study. Its effect is to open things up to all outsiders so that we end up with a full house. Not an empty house. Because y'all are jealous of each other and speaking negativity of each other. God says don't be so hard because the hardness is supposed to be temporary. Before it's all over, there will be a complete Israel. Here it goes. As it is written, a champion will stride down from, let's go, from the mountain of Zion. He'll clean house in Jacob. And this is my commitment to my people, the removal of their sins. Boy, it's quiet to my right. From your point of view, as you hear and embrace the good news, let's go, of the message, it looks like the Jews are God's enemies. But look at it from a long-range perspective of God's overall purpose. They still remain God's oldest friends. God's gifts and God's call are under full warranty, never canceled and never rescinded. Which means when God chose your messed up self, he didn't make a mistake. He knew what he was doing. And I'm going to say this because you read it, but my church did not respond. Something wrong with five of you. But what he's saying is, if you keep doing my will, you will stop doing yours. Once you do what God has called you to do, you will start feeling guilty doing yourself. You'll be like, how could I be used like this and still be doing this? God does not have to deliver you. Your conscience will. When you continue to do wrong, then that means your conscience has been seared with an hot iron. God then gives you over to your own self. Now you are called a reprobate. Now, did I just make this plain? So you're catching people with a perfect gift in an imperfect human. And God has given them something perfect that represents him to make them strive to measure up. For some of us who ain't talking, we'll be doing this for the rest of our life. Because when God uses me and show me the things he showed me across America, I'd be like, there's no way in the world that people could expect for me to live on the level of my gifts. 
that would make me God. I'd send some folk not talking because after the meeting you went talking to your ex-friends and you got a little polluted and infected. But let me help you. The only demons that every church has in their ministry, I'm closing with this part, are the demons that are in people who are not saved. Saved people cannot have the spirit of God and a demon at the same time. You're catching someone in transition. And because their life is not pleasing unto you, you defined it to be demonic. But I hope you remember how long it took you to be who you are today. And you still ain't where you should be if you're honest with yourself. If we were to interview some of your real relatives and ask them about your character, I bet we get a different story than the one you tell. Some of you don't even talk to your relatives. You don't like them and they don't like you because y'all got to face your real selves. Now that we have that out the way. Let's go to Genesis 26 verses 12 through 18. Then I'm going to read a few things and we can go. Genesis 26 verses 12 through 18. This is a story about Isaac who is the son of Abram or Abraham or Abraham. Abraham, y'all ain't talking, is the father of the faith. He is also the first biblical human friend, biblically, of God. Adam was never called the friend. Noah was never called the friend. But when it came to Adam, uh, Abraham, he called him his friend. Look at mine and tell him there's layers to this. See, some of y'all are angry because God chose to stop his relationship with you at servant. But then there are others he decided to take to friendship. I need scripture. Why are you so angry? But I'll give it to you. And this is for two folk who will jump. He told his disciples, hitherto ye have been my servants. But thou shalt no longer be called servants. You shall now be called friends. I couldn't believe what I studied and looked up for one loud screamer. A friend is someone who properly represents you in their absence. So you're not my friend if you let somebody talk about me and you stood there and didn't say. A friend properly represents you in your absence. What are friends? They are two people living by one heart. Some of y'all still don't like that. I, I need more scripture. Listen, I'm not going to let you pimp my mind now. But I want to say to three of my members who are not talking to me, he says, a friend sticketh closer than a brother. <laughs> then he says, y'all not with me, greater love have no man than this, that a man would lay down his life. Oh, y'all quite for a friend. When you have a friend, they'll take a hit for the team and help you continue your journey. And only your friend will tell you you're wrong, but keep on pressing. Because they see your purpose as being stronger than your problem. I'm out of there. Look at somebody and tell them, God filled me with his purpose. And his purpose is much stronger than my problem. Your purpose and problems are going to have a fight one day. I wish I had people like Brother Johnny. I mean, it's going to have a fight one day. And only those who are faithful will win. So Isaac is the son 
of a man who is the biblical founder and first friend of Yahweh, Jehovah. The unpronounced name. If I was Isaac and I'm his only son, even though he had Ishmael, but if I'm the son God could promise with, I would ask my daddy every day, what does it feel like to be a friend of God? It's hard to ask some of you. Bishop, are you saying you're a friend of God? I didn't tell you yet, but I am. I am. No, no, you ain't got to clap for me. Friends know who they are. I am. I am. Took a long time. Because you can't be a friend until you serve properly. I'm not a friend because I'm a prophet or a bishop. I'm a friend because, like Abraham, when he asked me to do something, I do it. See, you're missing. You want to be a friend of God? You've got to learn to not ask so many questions and ask so many. All right, you have to just do what the Lord asks you to do. Forget it. Then Isaac sold in that land. He received in the same year, I'm preaching this Sunday, a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. The man waxed great, talking about Isaac. He went forward. He grew until he became very great. Look, somebody tell him there's layers to this again. He waxed great. He went forward. And as he pressed forward, he grew until he became, y'all not in, but very great. For he had possessions of flocks, possessions of herds. Now this is for all of you that get upset. Just because you have more than me don't mean you're better than me. I'm tired of folk thinking that to be humble, we have to be broke. If we're broke, who's going to feed the hungry and clothe the naked? Y'all, if everyone is broke with a good heart and want to help but have no possessions to help with, I want to speak to those who are humble for real. And that is, you thank God for all He's given you. I need God to give some of you more money than you ever had in your life. And I'm praying that you don't use it all on yourself. I could never be the pastor of a broke church. Oh, I can have about 12 broke folk, but I could never see y'all man be the pastor of a broke church. That means we have a church that can actually help nobody. Maybe I should digress. Maybe I should go home. Because maybe I should ask this question and see if five of y'all will be honest. How many of you enjoy being broke? Please raise your hand, wiggle your toes, shake your head. Come on, give me a sign that you enjoy being broke. Right, if you don't enjoy being broke, then I'm your pastor. Now, let me get back here. One of our members hit me today, and this happens in every ministry, so don't take it wrong. I will not give names, and she inboxed me about her, her lights and electricity being off. She needed a couple hundred dollars. And she wanted to go to the office to ask for it, but she wanted me to know. And she said, what should I do? And I said to the member, I hope somebody catch it, you need a job. Yes, sir. See, you didn't, I just stopped three of y'all from borrowing, huh? I told the member, 
You need a job. The church is not a bank. You don't want us to have money. You don't want us to be rich. So how can you ask from a poor institution? And I told her, see, this is faith talking, that the way any real human being pays bills is either by working or they have benefits with the government. The church is not taking care of no grown people. Yeah, some of you don't want to clap. I don't know if they can hear me out here. We're not taking care of no grown people. When you become a certain age, you should have waxed great. And as you went forward, you should have became very great. You are the way that you are because of the company you kept or refused to sit with. Because you were too holy to sit with them. All right, I still... The wealth of the wicked. Who got the money? The wicked. How you avoid them? Some of you are just too holy for God. Let me explain. You don't avoid sinners or you would have to avoid your family. Your children. Them grandkids. See, y'all ain't best friends. God never told you to avoid them. He said, come out from amongst them not leave, and be separate, not separated. If you went to school, you would know the difference in separation and separate. When I'm separated, I have to leave your company. When I'm separate, I can hang with you and people know there's a difference in you and I. I don't have to avoid you to advance. I can't get help. I have to know who I am and stand on my ground. So your money done came a hundred times. You didn't like the package. Money ain't sanctified till it hits sanctified hands. That's how God launders money. He puts dirty money in sanctified hands. I hear you. I don't agree. You don't have to. That's why you broke. Because you don't agree. I'm not preaching this till Sunday, but if you read verse 12, and I need five of my members to scream on this, then we're back in Bible study mode. When Isaac sold, he reaped a hundredfold in the same year. We're not waiting two, three, and four years to start getting this. We said by the end of August, and we're standing on that by faith. And some of y'all are standing, I got to see if it happens. It's already happening. You done missed it. When a person is driving and made a mistake and took their eyes off the road this week and should have hit an embankment or been hit by another car, but you didn't, you just survived, right? When you ate food that you don't know whether it had pesticides or formaldehyde or whatever in it, cyanide, but you prayed over it and said grace ate it, got sick, but didn't die. He was there. You follow? When you dated somebody, gave them your number who is now a stalker, who is now domestic violent individual, and God made him leave you alone when he should have still been calling, you made it. Let me keep naming. When your dumb kids went outside and started hanging with the wrong crew and gunshots started flaring everywhere and went over your children's head how do you interpret wealth only in money
Look at somebody by faith and say these two words. Tell them this month. Don't even add to it. If they already know, they know. If they don't, then they don't. The closer you get to the promise, the problem escalates. So the closer we get to the end of August, some un, I mean I mean some un, unannounced things. Blast from the past, certain things that you forgot. They're going to pop up just to get you off of your square. But you got to let the devil know on Christ the solid. The scripture says, be still and know that I am God. Will you quote that to your neighbor? Those are also lyrics to a song. Be still and know that I am God. I want to read his portfolio again. See, I used a big word for those who are going to get rich and need to invest. You're going to need a portfolio. You're going to need documented papers on how much you have and how much you're worth. Is it growing? Where is it going? Look, look at somebody and tell them I'm getting ready to carry a briefcase now. It might be a Louis, but at least it's got more money in it than the Louis cost. I don't know. I'm old school. I just get me a leather black one and be chilling, but. Let's read his portfolio. He had possessions of flocks, possessions of herds, a great store of servants, and so much he had to where the Philistines envied him. You know when you're making it, when people change their behavior. Y'all spoke well just two days ago. Now they looking at you like something wrong. It's because they let something come in between you and them. Oh, y'all are missing it. And whatever they heard made them feel, it made them feel inferior to what they heard about you. If that was your real friend, they want you to make it. They're not upset. They want to call and be like, I heard you got your car today. I heard you got accepted back in the college. I heard that you don't need surgery. You got healed miraculously. A friend don't be like, oh, so you got a car. That's his DNA. Don't look at him funny. That man run whenever something good happens. And not only does he run, he's a good giver. It said people were jealous of his possessions. Verse 15 said, for all the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham, his father, the Philistines had stopped them. I'm about to read and let you go and filled them with earth. That word earth also means dirt. And Abimelech said unto Isaac, go from us, that's the king, for thou art much mightier than we. Some folk want to disconnect from you because you're too strong. Look at somebody and tell him, I accept that because I am strong. I'm not going to diminish who I am for anybody. That's not humility, that's hypocrisy. It took you too long to get where you are for you to need to diminish that for someone to like you. Well, you ain't got to throw your cars and your Bentleys and your uh, Rovers or your Audis in people's face. Let me tell you what is actually happening to the person speaking about what they have versus how the other person hears it. Can I talk to this side? You're basically testifying about what you've acquired to show them this is what going through hell will give you. They see it as you're saying you ain't, you have not arrived until you get this. What we're trying to tell you is you watch me go through all of this 
and now you see what God is doing, I'm encouraging you to finish what you're going through because the end of it is going to give you something that you can be proud of. Look at two and three people, tell them, finish going through it, whatever it is. I told you last week we need somebody to help us go through or to. I need proof that God can, so I need him to do it for somebody. He ain't got to do it for me, but once he do it for someone and they put it in my face, that's like God saying, do you want it too? I don't need all that to be blessed. I don't need to be blessed, but I need it to be a blessing. Oh, y'all, I don't need it to be blessed, but in order to bless someone, I need it. You don't need a five-bedroom home. You only got two kids. But what if someone you love is evicted? That extra room ain't for you. That's not me being pious and stuck up. That's me carving out a place in my blessing that if someone needs. Y'all ain't going to get on my nerves. Abimelech, verse 16, said, go from us, you are mightier than us. Verse 17, Isaac departed then, thence. He pitched his tent in the valley of Gerah, which is a portion out there near Philistine. He dwelt there. Isaac digged again. Please underscore, because I'm about to teach the rest and leave. Isaac digged again the wells of water, not that he wanted to dig, that were already dug up. And dirt was put in it that his father put effort in. Let's read it. And I see some of you trying to dig your own wells. I'm going to read it again because I got one good man pushing me, two good men pushing me. Isaac departed thence, pitched the tents in the valley of Gerah. Verse 17 dwelt there. 18, and Isaac digged again. Because I'm about to prove the two folk who were jumping screen ain't no new faith. And the new stuff I hear being preached and taught online, that is not Christianity. That is not Bible. That is not faith. That is somebody who got hurt by the church and found out how to use the Bible to disturb the faith. See how quiet y'all are on this side? They are using our scriptures to prove that the scriptures are not saying what our fathers said it was saying. So they're making you dig a new gospel instead of taking the dirt out of the old. All right, I just lost it. I lost y'all too, but y'all gonna catch it later. I'm not saying that everything that our pastors was was in the Bible but let me tell y'all something they said don't wear a lot of makeup that is not in the Bible they said Jezebel wore makeup like y'all that ain't in the Bible they said the spirit of Jezebel is red lipsticks and nail polish that ain't in the Bible they said women should not wear clothing that is like men it's an abomination and they meant pants that ain't in the Bible See, y'all still ain't talking to me because they wore similar garments, but the difference in men and women was the fringes at the bottom. I'm going to leave all y'all alone. Jezebel wore makeup only to go into war when they were messing with her husband. If he saw her put on paint, he said, leave those guys alone. When she put that on, she was going to kill somebody to make sure her man stays in authority. When y'all put it on, it's to get another man. But let me come back to you. You don't even wear it to keep the man you have. God made me just like this. No, every now and then you need some makeup. If he can't love me like this, forget it. We are creatives. God created man in his image. We are God cosmetics. 
He picked up dirt and fashioned it. You can fashion yourself. It is okay to be fashionable. And you should have been free from that spirit years ago. Nobody want to be married to Aunt your mama. No, no. Even Aunt your mama pancake box. She done lost weight. She done got her hair done. She done put... What in the world? And, and, well, Bishop... That name ain't in the Bible. Sure is. And Job had three more lovely daughters. One was Kazia, and the finest was Jemima. It's okay to put sprinkles on your ice cream. If you went to the circus, you didn't rebuke the clown. Be the best version of yourself. Because when you go to heaven, your flesh won't be going. So what are you talking about? You've been bound by a doctrine, but this is not my point. My point is, some of the stuff they said that we are living is not biblical. But it is safety. Because now we have more fornicators and babies out of red like than ever. Because them dresses are a little too tight. For any man that's a real man. Young, especially the old ones. They play it off like, mm. People don't just go to search to see Christ. And some of you old saints ain't talking. You got married because you saw him in church. Most of you got married to a man that never went to church. My grandmama was not married to a saved man. Otha Jones was not saved. He got saved later. My great-grandmother was married to the number runner joint. Saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, eat no pork, Sabbath day. But my granddaddy, Poppy, was the number man. How all you holy women get unholy relationships? You know how. Most of you led your man to Christ. He didn't lead you to God. Verse 18, Isaac digged again the wells of water which had been dug in the days of Abraham, his father. I'm about to do this. For the Philistines had stopped them up after the death of Abraham. They waited till the fathers died, and then they started throwing dirt in the wells that the fathers digged. And he called their names after the names by which his father had already called them. He did not give the church or the gospel a renovation. Or, oh, y'all are quiet. He did not. Now, if I'm your pastor, you should be talking to me. If not right now, you've been pastored by online streaming church. And that's why you're confused right now. Because you like the new thing because the new thing is not too far from the club. Same clothes you wore Saturday to drop it, you wore them Sunday to sing praise and worship. You, you like that you ain't got to change at all. When I grew up, they had play clothes, school clothes, church clothes. All right, I'm going to leave that. And your church clothes were not actually church clothes. They were clothes that taught you how to dress for a job. 
blue suit, gray suit, black suit, crispy white shirt, light blue shirt, white collar, blue collar jobs. See, they made you dress like you could go somewhere. All right, now that we read, let me give you this and let you go. Let me see if three people are catching. Sometimes, what did I say? Because I want to know if you're engaged. Sometimes faith will take you in a questionable direction that will cause you, I'm going to see who catches, to pause versus pursue. One more time. Sometimes faith will take you in a questionable direction that will cause you to pause versus pursue. I thought that was the deepest statement of the night, but I'll move on. Faith is not always a forward motion. I'm talking of talkers now. Faith will take you or escort you in another direction and sometimes it's backwards. Anybody, I've, I, just, I just feel like I'm going backwards. That's the way, that's where faith want to take you. He want to take you back to the place where life was clogged, where they put dirt in your daddy's teaching. It wants to take you back to good morals, ethics, cultures, good morning, say your grace, eat at the table together, come in before dark. Faith just want to put some morals in your life. Oh, I heard from Elder Jackson. I got to teach this now. Isaac and Abraham, father and son. Are you with me, Elder Rahim? They had several similar experiences. Abraham was a liar. See, y'all love him till you find out he lied, huh? Isaac was a liar. Look at folks, their eyebrows changed. They were liars. Yeah. Don't worry, I don't say nothing without proof. Hang in there. Abraham's wife became barren when she got old and once both to have no kids, but she had a miracle child named Isaac. Isaac had a wife who was barren too. One supposed to have no children. But she had Esau and Jacob. Oh, y'all see? Everybody's quiet. They both ended up in the same Philistinian kingdom. Where did they lie, though, Bishop? See, y'all don't like the healthy stuff. Y'all like the gossip. So let me give your unhealthy spirit where they lie. When Abraham took his wife Sarah to the place of Gira where the Philistines were. Back then, tradition taught that if a king wanted your wife, they could kill you or fight you and take your wife. So Abraham told Sarah, when they ask you who we are, tell them we are brothers and sisters. Oh, some of you ain't told that little lie. Tell them them two kids mine on taxes. Can I claim two of your children? And Abraham... Never told the king that was his wife and the king wanted her and was about to kill him for her. Asked Abraham, who is this? He said, my sister. The king said, okay. And he was about to take Sarah, marry her, and sleep with her. When he went to sleep the night before he was going to touch her, the Bible said, our God visited him. He don't even believe in God. And God said, if you touch my friend's wife, 
Oh, y'all didn't read that, huh? We'll get there. I will kill you. The king got up and ran to Abraham and said, Negro, stop lying. Your God just told me this is your wife. You and her get out of here. When you and God are tight, he'll tell folk who you are. You don't have to fight for that. He will let them The king serves a whole different God, but our God visited him. The king got up and went to Abraham and said, your name is Abraham. Read it. We'll read it Sunday. And Sarah is your wife. Stop. Oh, now y'all know, huh? Now you're deep. When I said they were liars, your eyebrows was moving all over the place. You're in Bible study to learn what you don't know. Moving his eyebrow. That's just like what men do to women behind your back. You don't know it. They tell the other women who like them, we married, but we ain't together. But we're in the same house. We're together. We divorce. No, divorce ain't separated. No, no, hold on now. You I ain't touched her in seven months. That ain't that long. Not for a wife. That's like resetting. See how quiet it's getting? And then that wife that y'all have beef with one day goes out with you to eat at Eddie V's. This ain't a true story, and I hope it ain't prophetic. And while y'all at Eddie V's, that same girl you met outside of your wife comes up because she's the table server. And she says, hello. And you be like, hey. And you be trying to give her that nod like, don't say nothing. Then she says, so, is this your brother or something? No. Well, who is it? Because he told me he ain't married. I am his wife. See, that right there. Look how quiet it got. You know why you're quiet? Y'all done did it. When you ain't guilty, you talk. Y'all guilty. And all of a sudden, y'all were there to make up. Now you're about to fully break up because your lie caught up with you. His son watched his every move, watched his walk with God, Watch the journey he took. I'm about to close. Went down the same path of his daddy. Ended up in similar situations like his father. And this boy, when King Abimelech said to him, who is she to you? Isaac said, we brothers and sisters. I had to study to find out why he did it. It wasn't just because he didn't want to die. This is for three folk to jump. He did it because his father never told him it was wrong. Right? And sometimes you will pattern yourself after somebody so tight that because they're succeeding after a bad decision, you make that same decision. We got to be careful letting people believe that everything we're doing is okay. I need 10 of y'all to jump up and shout, it's not okay. Yeah, you got the right husband after cheating with five other people. But let them know. Let them know. You didn't get it right the first time. You got it right after getting it wrong five times. If you can't get it right after multiple times of getting it wrong, something's wrong with you. Fifteen minutes, I'll let y'all go. He married, called his wife's sister, 
the Lord went to King Abimelech and said, do not touch him. And both kings was like, you just like your lion daddy. And I don't know. I'm Listen, I'm preaching it humanistically for you to talk. And the kings probably said, I don't know how God can choose friends that are liars. How do y'all represent God and not trust him and lie to save your own life? It's quiet to my right, quiet in the middle, quiet to my left tonight. Have you ever had a person that actually knows you who've ever said something like this and one person jumped? All you had to do was tell me because I already know. What, what, what? You don't have to lie to me. I know you. I know what you would do, what you wouldn't do, and you're lying better with a straight face. That makes you almost demonic. I know you. With all the members we have in here who I know are saved, I can pick out six habitual liars right now. I can pick out three professional fornicators who do it every week. I can pick out two adulterers whose wives don't know a darn thing. Look at the women. Please tell me. Please. Bishop. It's, it's for me to know and for you to find out. I'm from Brooklyn. I don't snitch. But the thing is, why lie to somebody who already know what your proclivities and your inadequacies, I don't hear nobody, and your delicacies, did I say delicacies, what they are. If I were married and went to the mall, my wife don't have to say, why are you looking? You know I'm looking. See, look at y'all. Don't worry, you ain't my wife, but uh, if I'm at the mall and somebody walk by that's fine, ain't no sneak in the peak. I'm old. I'm gonna be like, that girl look good. And if she's a real woman, she gonna say, that girl got it going on. See, some of y'all are just not real. There's no way you missed it and you lied to your wife. I didn't see it. Yes, you. And she saw him, and you'll never know. She smelled him before she saw him. Good God. Lord have mercy. Look at somebody and tell them facts. That's facts. There are people who will use you just for their own good. But in those two narratives, God himself straightened out the issue. That's my point. His faith that Abraham had in Isaac and God made God go to the kings and say, excuse my two lying friends. See, it still got quiet. They were doing what they thought was best to save their lives. They didn't have enough trust in the relationship that I have with them. Oh, now, now you're catching up with me. Faith is not faith if it doesn't have something to dispute with. We're on our last level. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm filing a dispute with God. Now, some of you are going to act deep. Not me. Oh, I have. I have filed some discrepancies. As I said, when you told me to do this, you made it look good. You ain't tell me there were some snakes down in that thing. 
Now, I know this ain't manipulation because you ain't a man. But we got to find a word for what you just did. You coerced me. You kept showing me a new home, but you didn't show me three evictions first. You kept showing me a great marriage, but you didn't show me three terrible relationships. See, y'all quite... God does not show you everything. He knows the end from the beginning. So when he talks to you, he skips over various chapters and he ends up where faith will take you. This is where you're going to end up. Now you must make it through your once upon a time to enjoy your happily ever after. People be coming to me, I need a prophecy, which means they don't want the long story. Is this going to work or not? And if I say the Lord said it will, you still going to go through your chapters. You do better to get wisdom on how to handle the chapter. I feel like I chose the wrong one. After five years, because they finally made you mad. No, you ain't choose no wrong one. You don't have enough faith for the journey. Because in everybody's journey, there's some dirt in the well. Y'all don't, in everybody's journey, there's some congestion and some clogging. Oh boy, when I preach this on Sunday, I'm preaching the sermon, can you dig it? I can't wait. Sunday, y'all play with me on Sunday and see what happens. I'll bring a shovel up in this piece and hang it right here. Pot of dirt. You don't have to be perfect to be purposed. Will you write that in your own spirit or on your tablet or on paper? You don't have to be perfect to be purposed. You have to stand on your purpose. There's an Af African a standard Bible out that most black people read from because it gives a lot of history. It says disputes over land, water, and grazing land are common in Africa. Isaac and his father went through the same disputes over wells. His adversaries, y'all are not there, went to the extent of filling Isaac's wells with dirt. The ordered, they ordered Isaac to leave their land. He avoided, I'm about to run, conflict because he knew God's plan for him was greater than a well. There are people who will put dirt in the game every day, but you got to know the picture is bigger than what they're attacking. Don't get upset over the well. They want you to lose your relationship with God by only serving him for what you can get out of him. Some of y'all keep looking at him, but the way he run in church, he gonna run to the bank. You gonna be sitting trying to get $5 somewhere. You don't understand faith is an action. You don't just hear it. You didn't look at the Olympics and say, why are they running? They were running for the gold. He's running for a G-O-A-L. He has a goal. Isaac avoided conflict because he knew God's plan for him was greater than the well. The strength to avoid conflicts, y'all are going to miss this, and trust God can only come by God's grace. Because some of us are somewhat gangster in our past. It is hard for you to just let things go. So God says, until your faith gets strong enough for you to know what to give attention to. I'm going to keep sending conflict after conflict. Oh, you quiet. After conflict until you learn some conflict resolution. Y'all in. 
You don't have to argue. You've been through that with the person five times straight. You got to find another way to take this. I got 10 people. It's called conflict resolution. You already know if you talk to him at a certain time, he going to yell, cuss, break things. You already know he just like his daddy. He a liar, daddy a liar, and the granddaddy was a liar. The boy grew up lying. So you're going to hear 50 times, I'm changed. I'll never do it again. God is not letting that person hurt you because they're demon possessed. He's letting them hurt you because he's challenging your faith. And faith has to have the ability to trust God while being faced with the conflict. Now, my church should be talking to me. The visitors can look sleepy, but my church should be saying, that's a new way of seeing things. That if you got faith in the marriage, you fight for it. Whatever you don't have faith in, you stop fighting for. See, y'all missing it. Faith without works. If you got faith in the thing, you work on it. How long you got to fight until the dirt's out the... All right, let me do it. See, you fight till the dirt's out the well. That's for Sunday. Look at your neighbor and tell them, can you dig it? That's all I want to know. Some folk don't have enough muscle for the digging. Let me give you the example and maybe someone will scream for me. Then I'll take five more minutes. You ready? Dr. Tracy, because you're actually eating this. When God visited Abraham's house, he was Abram and Sarah, Sariah. He held a conversation with Abraham about her having a baby. Sarah was in the kitchen, modern day vernacular. She was in the kitchen cooking. God, to prove he was Yahweh, Yahshua Elohim, he said, why laughest thou, Sarah? The Bible lets us know she didn't laugh out loud. She laughed within herself, which means God knows what you feel on the inside. See? I never said it. Oh, you said it to him. Because he hears feelings. Unspoken words. Look how quiet it got. I ain't never said that about you. If you thought it, you said it to God. Yep, I got help way in the back. I ain't got it up here. That's why when folk ask you, what do you think about me? They're asking you, express it verbally. Don't hold them words hostage. You treating me wrong. Why? Elder Frank, this is what happens. He says, you're going to have a baby. Then Sarah says later to Abraham one-on-one, -on -one, how are we going to have a child? I'm old. You real. Oh, yeah. Said maybe God didn't hear our age. See, faith don't look at age. Faith don't look at degrees. Faith don't look at whether your father was in your life or your mother left you abandoned. Faith is a whole new script, right? It's what God thinks of you and how he wants you to turn out. Now, this going to sound raunchy, but we in study here. Ten of you catching and jumping. If you do, you will be blessed. When you have faith, that's why Abraham's called the father of faith. Abraham probably said to Sarah, I agree with you because you are past the age of getting pregnant and I'm too old to even be fertile. He said, but I tell you what, we're going to keep having sex. Now, the mere fact that they kept on while they were old, they knew they weren't going to get it without participation. And some of y'all think your faith is just supposed to make things happen? I believe it by faith. Where's your participation? Y'all know I 
ain't going to never leave you without you feeling something. But y'all got to know what it is to be in school. She'd have never got pregnant if they didn't touch each other. Abraham had so much faith. He was 100. He was only about 89 back then. Abraham had so much faith that he proved nothing was wrong with him. When she gave Hagar to him, she got pregnant. Abraham said, so now that you know that I'm good, you better come on in this room. Because we done had a fake version already. He said, God did not say, help him create another way. And that's what the new church is doing. They're creating another way to help God be God. God does not need any help. He needs saints with shovels. All right, I got to get out of here. That's willing to go get the old power that dirt has been thrown on out of the well. They kept on until one day, Brother Troy, one day, Keevan, Sarah woke up totally inflamed, thrown up all over the place, and she said, I'm sick. But she could not translate sick to mean pregnant. Because she didn't have the faith to carry. Some of you, you don't have enough faith to carry what he's speaking. So it's going to be in you, but it's never going to come forth. It's going to miscarry. You're going to abort. If I had somebody to help me, I know I could do it. You may not need help at all. Certain people in here like myself. We don't get help. Oh, we get love. We get people that are concerned, but they don't have what we need to get it done. So they hug us, praying for you if you ever need anything. I need everything. But why am I going to tell you when you just borrowed from me last week? I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't tell you what I need. Bishop, if you should ever need a place to stay, you can stay with me. A nice member told me that. I was like, but my place nice. And no, I don't want to stay with you. I want to stay in the place equivalent to mine. See, you're missing it. You don't. You got to fight for what you have faith for. You don't stop and downsize so that things make sense. You tell what doesn't make sense. God's word said. And some of you don't have enough faith to carry that. So you rather foster a child than birth one. You rather adopt one than carry. You rather get it without the labor. I'm going to close right through here. I had so much more to say, but no, no, y'all are nice, and I'm going to be nice back. Save it till next Wednesday. She get pregnant. That boy is called Isaac. The name of the boy means God has made me laugh. I want to say this to 10 of my members who have not been very cordial tonight, but three have been pleasant. That when God does what he does by the end of August, you're going to laugh. Now, don't get happy because some of you, he's going to do it and take it back because you didn't believe. He's going to do it to show you that I'm God.
about to close, so a few of you can go hang out, do what you do outside of the faith. You just know faith going to make sure your car don't crash. And that who you're going to be with don't have HIV. You just show your sin is protected. Rushing to get out of his house to go to somebody else's house. Then when you're sick, you want to run back to his house and bring up your grandmama, who your pastor was, who you throw names that God is friends with in his face after your fate. People only drop names because they don't effectively lift a name. So we don't lift Jesus, but then we put a name who Jesus loves in his face. Hoping that he would pay you some attention. That's how we do this. Watch how I close this. He wasn't a liar. He just lied. Like some of you are not pros. You just did it and moved on. I've been one. See, honesty. I saw five men. I ain't seen no women lift their hands. Other women was like, hmm. But I've been one. I have done something but never became it. And when it didn't kill me, I was like, whew, thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. I won his friend at the time, but he proved he was still mine. Because friends make you look good in your absence. Now watch how I close this. Look at me. Give me your undivided attention. Richard, the man lied. Mm -hmm. This is what happens. Faith says to Isaac, you don't have to fully be like your daddy. Yeah, uh -huh. Go back and fix what he let stay clogged. Yeah, yeah. He said, before faith takes you forward, go back to them wells. Oh, yeah. See, some of you don't know why God's taking you back. There's something that was not complete. That only those with vision and respect for the ancestors. Oh, yeah. Go backwards. Redig them wells. That word earth, I gave you the simple word dirt. But the real Hebrew word for that means clogged. So they clogged every well to make sure that what should be flowing no longer can flow. And where there's no flow, there's a hustle. Oh, okay. Everybody caught it next week. Oh, I'm going to preach Sunday. I just gonna... Where there is congestion, back up, clogging. You need something healthy to help push what should have been out of you a long time ago. Sometimes you need x -lax. Sometimes you need... I don't want to name everything, but you need it. Sometimes you have to put yourself on a personal detox. A cleanser. Some of you are not going to talk, but we're closing. You are backed up. Because you listen to too much gossip, constipation. You listen to too much he said, she said. Too much. You just let everything folks said penetrate your spirit. And your spirit took all that dirt.
And now you're trying to go forward, but you don't have what it takes to go through that season because you're already dehydrated. You're going to need a source to help refresh you before you can continue the journey that killed your daddy. Satan don't need a new tactic if he has children repeating the same journey of their fathers. They went through. Sunday you will hear this. He called each well that he dug a name. See how quiet y'all are? Esek and all of this. The only well you remember for you churchified folk. You only remember one name, and that is what? Rehoboth. You didn't know that was a well. You thought that was a town. You thought that was a place. That's a well. And everybody preaches it. Hitherto the Lord has made room for us. And so I want my Rehoboth. Well, let me help those who are not properly theologians. And let me see if three of my members will jump and be blessed. Rehoboth does not mean that. Looking for what? Does not. No, no, not at all. See, that's why you are holding God to a scripture that you are not properly translating. And he's telling you, if the problem ain't me, it's got to be your interpretation. Put the Rehoboth up there. Find the doggone scripture. The Lord has made room for us. Rehoboth, wherever you first see it. It's in the book of Genesis, right near the chapter that I just finished reading. Right in the same chapter somewhere around there. Hey, if this makes sense, you need to run because I know you done preached it too. So if it ain't there, that's why we talk in the office and I tell you, got to be careful preaching what we feel. Even though it sounds good, if it ain't scriptural, you got to say, this is what I feel. Wait. Go back to 21. On this, let's stand after this. Let's see if five of my members are stand. And they digged another well. Oh, y'all ain't there. Look at Chef Waldron. He like, come on, Bishop. Make me proud. They digged another well, and they strove for that also. Go back two more verses for fun. Isaac's servants digged in the valley, found there a well of springing water. Which means for my church, refreshing is right at hand. This is the month to refresh yourself. Come on, come on, come on, hurry up. The herdmen of Gera strove with Isaac's herdmen, which meant both sides began to fight each other because they didn't like that Isaac's vision was being accomplished. So where there's tension, it's because something's about to break. I hear you. Don't rush me. I'm waiting to see what Rehoboth means. You slow down. And then go repent on your Facebook Live that you did not preach it correctly. The water is ours. After we dug it and the water came, someone claims it. Ain't that how it happened? You do all the work, someone else gets all the credit. Janice, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Janice, look at me. I want to show you what I'm talking about. How many years did you and I sit with a group of people and talk about the new name of the church that we were originally going to give to this church? The church was called 3D. You remember? It meant to, it mean, it meant to be delivered, to be developed, and etc. We worked hard on 
videos on branding. Am I right? On everything. You remember that? I just had a member called his church 3D Church. That boy right there. That's the name of his church. Right there. That boy that ain't put in none of that work. That's the name of his church. He didn't dig that well. But he drank that water. Well, you can have it because we at Rehoboth now. We the, we the place of passion. You can have that drink. Took us three years of praying and fasting and things to wait on that. The water's ours. And he called that place Eset. What does Esek mean? See, the Esek does not mean that the water is ours. It means what comes after it. Semicolon, because there we strove with him, which meant I had to fight for this. That's what Esek is. It is not fresh water or the water's ours. It is what comes after semicolon. Why isn't my teachable church talking? See, I can go online and start a Zoom and get paid $25 from people and never talk to y'all on a Wednesday. Laugh all you want to. I done thought about it a hundred times. Now we only have church on Sunday. What happened, Bishop? You happened. Because they strove with him. Verse 21. Here we go. And they digged another well and strove for that well also, except this one ain't striving anymore. And he called the name of this one Sitna. What does that mean? And he removed from thence and dug another well. Here's, here go. For and for that well they strove not. And because they didn't fight for it, they called the name of it. Oh, oh, y'all didn't hear that. When you're in your season of Rehoboth, you get things you don't have to fight for. We don't want room for something we got to fight for. He said they fought for all the wells, but this one. Oh, y'all want me to read it slower? Was that too quick? And he removed from thence and digged another well. He let them have what they fought for. Oh, y'all meant. He said, if I got to fight for it, faith didn't give it to me. I got to let my faith fight. Y'all ain't. See? Reason why certain things didn't work for some of y'all is you making it work. Instead of giving it over to God saying, have your way, Lord. He called, watch him, my Hashan. I'm sorry, that something came out of me. And for that they strove not, and he called the name of it, because they didn't fight for it, Rehoboth. Yeah. Then he said, for now, the Lord hath made room for us, and we shall be fruitful. What does he call God making room? Taking the fight out of it. You'll know when God is involved. Because you will not have to exert all that energy when he's already seen you go through several cycles of watching folk take away from you what you worked hard to get. In this stand, the pitch is bigger than the well. This is God trying to tell you, I want to put an end to the fighting. And y'all ain't caught it all night. 
I want to make room for you to enjoy something and be refreshed and not have to look over your shoulder. This ain't about the Lord has made room. No, no. He fought for every well and let them have it. But when he got to this one, the enemies had no more strength to fight. They ran out of strength. And by the end of the month, whoever's against you, they're going to run out of strength. You're not going to have to say, leave me alone. They don't have enough strength to bother you because they've run out of plans, plots, strategies. Your faith allowed you to make it through the worst season of your absolute life. Now scream on this for me, Renan. Scream on this for me. Isaiah, I, I, Isaiah, scream on this for me for those that got sense. The victory that they needed was not forward. Y'all forgot that the whole time. Faith said, your victory is back there. I just want something new and fresh. No, no, go back to something old. Anytime you see folk digging by faith, you do know folk dig looking for treasure. Enemies dig to bury a treasure. So the same hole your enemies dug for you to die in, let them know I just got a fresh glass of water out of that hole. My ministry got well known and I became a global prophet because all the lies my enemies told. They made me famous. No positive advertisement at all. No commercials. No selling books. And I'm an author of four. I didn't sell no product. What got me from one church, one city, was my rumor got there first. And when I got to that city, I refused to fight for my name. I just watched God make room. Y'all need to. And when I preach, they said, there's no way God can use somebody to this magnitude if he doing all that. You got to let your pursuit be stronger than the pressure. You got to take purpose over the problem. Shabak, I'm trying to help y'all. And y'all not talking to me. You keep restarting for no reason at all. Finish something. Look at three or four people and tell them that with passion. Finish something, will you? I don't believe that we have to fight for everything we get. I do not believe that. I believe. That after you let folk do what they do to you and you refuse to have conflict with them, that God will give you a season without a fight. As Kevin said, God said, I'll make your enemies be at peace with you. I'll provide a table for you in the presence. And if they don't behave, I'll make them your footstool. But you ain't fighting. I went through something today that I can't tell any details about. It was one of the hardest things in my life today. And I said to God, is this August or is this de December? I said, you got me preaching to my members. He said, Todd, hush. Go on the phone with people I dearly love. And all of my entire family got into a four to five way conversation of conflict. They said words to each other that I never heard them say in all of my 60 something years. And then one of them attacked me. And the uh, old me was like, I'm about to get on the plane. 
Say it. See, y'all acting too old. Say it to my face. And I knew the one talking that I could beat him, but I just wanted to kill him. Because he was talking about someone I dearly love. I was like, y'all going to keep talking? I said, I'm about to hang up. And the Lord said, if you hang up, you lost. I don't know who's like me, but I'm not crying because I'm hurt. I'm crying because I'm angry, right? Now, all y'all that said amen, that's a problem. I know y'all clapping, but that's a real problem. And you shouldn't be nowhere near proud of it. It's a problem. One that I discussed. It's a problem. And I don't cry easy. I start crying, you know, the real crying. And it was like, Todd, and I'm biting my lip. Can't pierce it because I had my Invisaligns and things in, so... That was God. He made me have them in. I've been bleeding because I'm angry. I know y'all don't care, but I'm giving it to you. And I'm telling my uncle and them, it's, it's my immediate family. Crystal, it's brothers. It's my uncles. It's, and they're all on my grandma's side. We, are, we love each other. We kill people for each other. But we ain't never killed one another. Ever. I never heard so many mother, fathers, sister, brothers. Yeah, y'all know what I said. And if God was sanctified, why didn't he let me hang up? Then you called me one. At the time, I said, I'm headed to the airport. I'm going to call Dr. Mixon. You teach Bible study. I got to go. See, y'all ain't real. My money was not saying be nice. My money said get a first class ticket. Call up some of your boys in that city in case they got some backup. Take one of my guys with me. But then I said I didn't want to hurt them either. And look at me, Rennis. I never have been so broken in years. Walked in my house crying like a newborn baby. The Lord said, you got to study your sermon. I was writing the sermon while crying under pressure. Lord said, ain't nobody preaching for you. You preaching. Had to lay my head on the wall, take a quick nap. God said, I'm not finished talking. Finish the sermon. Where's my, where's my phone? Who keeps just taking my stuff? Bring my phone. I was no good. Your pastor. See, you hear me preach. You see God's anointing, but you don't know what we're going through. And I had to make sure that I didn't handle it like this generation. This person does not even have my number, this certain relative of mine. While I was preaching, my iPad was up. You would have never seen me not be professional. What comes on my phone message shows up on my iPad. The person that caused all the mess wrote out of nowhere and says, I'm so sorry that I got you upset. Upset? <laughs> he says, I felt like when I did that to you, God may have taken me home. I was very angry and I feel like I will suffer for what I did. I've never gotten this angry, Todd. 
Please forgive me, my son. Let me call you later. Todd, I am sorry. Now, to some of you, right? That means nothing. You want folk to suffer. You want them to lose everything because they hurt you. You want to be more important than the story. But I had to say to myself, what did it take for this grown man to swallow his pride and apologize to his nephew? Y'all ain't talking to me about something that will take me a while to get over. When you see people still functioning at 100% to help somebody while they are right now needing to be refreshed, they are standing by faith. You follow? And some of y'all think faith is for money, cause faith is for your mind. Faith is for your sanity. Faith is for your strength. And my church has been living on the wrong faith. I called my daddy when I got to the church. When they picked me up out the car, they saw me smiling, hugging, kissing them. What's going on? They didn't see none of it. I said to my daddy, he wouldn't answer. I said, even though you're right, be the guy you taught me to be and apologize to who's wrong. That's what I learned from my father. It's going to take you 10 years to learn that because you don't know how to do that yet. That's called being saved. Sanctified. That's called being an image of God that Jesus would get nailed and say, Father, forgive them. Oh, yeah. For they know not. You got to stop letting the present coach your feeling. You got to go back to the ways that our ancestors were. They said the reason why I didn't kill the white man is I needed to have money for my children. They had to see the bigger picture. If I would have did it, I would not have been able to take care of you. So I had to take some of the demise and pressure because, Todd, you were my newborn child. And I needed a job for diapers. and in All right, forget it. Who are you mimicking? Are they successful? Because if not, you need to stop. I see my new members not jumping. It'll take y'all a while because you ain't used to teaching. You used to prayer and prophesying and music. And we got to detox you because you're going through health issues, marriage issues, children issues, eviction issues. And you just think saying the word faith is going to get you out of it. Faith without your participation. Am I right about it? All right, everyone stand. Get a good seed in your hand. 